0.9% financing on most Tundra hybrid and gas models. Toyota, let's go places. If you've been injured, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Phone lines are open right now to take your call. I called Joe, and I got way more. They fight hard for injured Mainers. Call Joe at 207 Call Joe. When Detail 207 wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. From cars and trucks to big rigs and motorcycles, Detail 207 does it all. If it has wheels and isn't as clean as you'd like it to be, give them a call to schedule an appointment today. Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. Two people are displaced after a fire in Brooks this morning. Crews were called to 717 Kenny Road just before 10 o'clock. Fire Chief Hans Albee says there were flames coming out of the windows when they arrived. We were able to establish that no one was in the building, first of all. That was the most important thing for us. Uh, and then we did have some interior qualified people who were able to go inside and start to extinguish the flames. Crews responded from several towns. Chief Albee says they were able to get the fire under control in about 15 minutes, but the building is not in livable condition. He says the occupants do have another place to stay. The fire marshal's office has been called in to investigate what exactly caused that fire. A dump truck rolled off the Newburgh Road in Herman just before 10 o'clock this morning. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's deputy on scene, the driver appeared to veer off the road and struck a tree, resulting in that dump truck rolling over. The sole occupant of the dump truck was transported to a nearby hospital. Their condition is unknown at this time. The crash caused traffic to be rerouted near the scene. Looks like he left the roadway. Um and got partially in the ditch and then struck a tree and ended up rolling the dump truck over. State police did look at their commercial unit, looked at the truck, uh, we're constructing the accident and then DEP's helping with the cleanup. According to Sergeant Decker, the Department of Environmental Protection was called in to pump diesel out of the truck's tank. Well, switching gears now with the 131st legislature now officially adjourned, there are a number of lawmakers who won't be returning to the state house due to term limits. One of those lawmakers is Senate President Troy Jackson, who has served the people of northern Aroostook County for the past 20 years. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with Jackson after the Senate adjourned following veto day. I know for a fact that over that time, I've helped people and that was what it was always about. Senate President Troy Jackson was first elected to the Maine House of Representatives in 2002. Born and raised in Allagash, one of the northernmost towns in the state and a logger by trade, Jackson got into politics by helping to block the Canadian border in 1998 to protest companies hiring Canadian workers over Maine loggers. Jackson worked his way up the political ladder, culminating in him being elected Senate President six years ago. For me, you know, the honor of the people in Northern Mercer County put me in this position, you know, for such a long time. I can't thank them enough for that. And like I said, I, you know, it is bittersweet. I mean, it'll be hard not being able to uh, have the ability to help people, you know, like I have in this position or, you know, change legislation that I felt was wrong for the people I cared about. Jackson says over his career, he's always tried to leave a positive impact on the state. I think more than anything, I just want people to know that regardless if I, they disagreed with me or something, I was always trying to do the best that I could for what I thought was the people of the state of Maine. Sometimes that um, collides with other people's hopes and wishes, but you know it was always with the best intentions. Well, he's not ruling out the possibility of running for a higher office. Jackson says for now, he's going to spend some time fishing and with family. I mean, anything's possible. I mean, like I said, I just want to... Uh, Spend the time, like I said, uh, getting back uh, to the rest of the county and doing the things that I love doing, and uh, we'll see what, what goes on. Jackson says his career is proof positive that anyone, even a boy from Allagash, can rise up to become the second most powerful Democrat in the state. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, established in 2011, the Front Street Shipyard is woven into the fabric of Belfast in more ways than one. The shipyard's president gave our Doug Banks a tour. Fair winds and following seas lead to Front Street Shipyard in Belfast.
We work on a lot of pleasure boats, as you'll see around the yard, but we also work on some commercial boats. You'll also see the Bar Harbor Whale Watch boats here. You'll see the Bowden from Maine Maritime, uh, this Clark, which is a local schooner, and the Rockland Fuel Boat, for example, are all in the yard right now for various bits of work to be done. Everything needs to be done in the boatyard. We try and have it all in-house. And the work taking place at the shipyard goes beyond the various vessels that meet the eye. We're working on projects for sea bags in Maine, some manufacturing companies up further east, and we do a lot of work for freshwater stone. It helps us diversify, but it also helps all the other businesses get things done. As their 38-foot tall travel hoist towers above, it's a view only made possible through the city's harbor walk that cuts through the heart of the shipyard. You won't find that anywhere else on the East Coast. The accessible harbor walk makes it possible for the yard to host public tours every Tuesday and Thursday. People in the industry coming up here all the time, they're like, you let people walk through the yard? With wind in their sails, the Front Street Shipyard and the city of Belfast continue the journey together. It's really helped the city expand and grow and become what it is to, to have all the people wanting to visit here. We have festivals all the time going on. It's, there's always something going on in Belfast. In Belfast, Doug Beggs, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Staying in Belfast, there's an art installation you might just miss if you're not looking close enough. Our Devin Dagnell tells us all about it and the man behind the artwork in this week's Destination Devin. What do you see here? It may seem like just another rocky stretch of beach along the shores of Belfast, but if you look closely, you'll find what remains of an art installation by a man whose art can be found across the country. He just kind of loved the expression you could get in human faces. And he, he said and he, he was, had a dream. Their faces were just, all these faces were coming at him. Around a corner like a train. Ron Cowan is a main artist who specialized in a very particular style of art, faces carved out of wood and hidden in plain sight. For his carvings, Ron would leave the majority of the wood intact, only carving out a face, often leaving the wood right where it was found, anticipating an unknowing spectator may someday stumble upon it. He loved the idea of uh, things being created and you may notice them in the moment uh, and you may not and then and then they may disappear and you either did experience it or you didn't and it, uh, there's a real poetry there. Before he delved into his art, Ron tried his hand at a few different professions, restaurateur, sales management, but nothing really stuck until the day he salvaged a wooden beam from a barn. And he said, oh, I wonder, let me try putting a face in there. Turned out Ron had quite the knack for carving faces. The first carving was so good, in fact, it was featured in the Mel Gibson film, The Man Without a Face. From that day on, Ron proceeded to carve dozens upon dozens of faces, some of which can still be found scattered throughout Belfast. He would look at wood and, and he would just see a face appear there and he would just bring it out of the wood. Sadly, Ron passed away in 2020, but he left behind a legacy of love and happiness. He was just really happy to do it. He loved Belfast so much. Everyone loved Ron. He was, he was very nice and he liked everyone. and tried to be kind to everyone. In Belfast, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And we had the pleasure of being in Belfast earlier this afternoon for our On the Road show, first one we of did. the year, uh, and it was just a stupendous day out there. Yeah, it was positively gorgeous. Calm winds, if any. Mm -hmm. You know, there was definitely sunshine, a little bit of cloudy overcastness going on there. Yeah. But otherwise, just really a picture-perfect evening. And here's hoping the rest of our evening continues along those lines. But let's get a first check of our forecast and find out. All right, thank you very much. Happy Friday. Look at us today. 78 here in Bangor, 77 Millinocket. A bit cooler with the sea breeze today. Bar Harbor is 69 or so. Overall, though, a very nice day today. Tomorrow, a little bit different across our area as we have increasing clouds out there now and likely a few more showers in the area tomorrow. We had a few out there today as well, but more widespread showers tomorrow will hold temperatures back just a bit more as there's quite a bit of a mess coming our way. All this kind of moving in this direction. So, 
It won't be an all-day rain. I wouldn't cancel your plans, but just know uh, showers will be in the area tomorrow into tomorrow night, and that's going to end most likely on Sunday. Our forecast though for tonight though is partly cloudy skies, some mostly cloudy skies, and a bit humid too, with low temperatures down near 50. Your full forecast is coming up. Alrighty, Jeff, thank you. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Gary Porter, the man accused of stealing two police cruisers and leading police on a chase, had his court hearing delayed once again. And with this month being Stroke Awareness Month, one stroke survivor speaking out about her experience. We'll have those stories and more local news when we come back. Oh, the puppies are loose. Time for sport mode. Party's over, boys. Drive the Nissan Sentra. Now get a low 209 per month lease on Sentra. Welcome to 207 Wellness, where transformation begins from within. Embark on a journey of self-betterment with our comprehensive services from weight management to IV hydration, vitamin supplementation, and neurotoxin injections. 207 Wellness is here to support your wellness goals. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you. Rejuvenate your body, refresh your mind, and reclaim your vitality with 207 Wellness. Transform your wellness. Transform your life. Give us a call today. It was one thing when my mom got Alzheimer's, but then we started noticing things that seemed off. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes she'd fidget with her fingers, get suddenly overwhelmed, and even throw things. And that was just never her. So we asked her doctor what else we could do. Rick Zolti is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Rexalti helped reduce my mom's symptoms. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexalti. Memphis, Michigan. Touchdown! Then Arlington, San Antonio. My goodness! The United Football League on Fox. Oh, the puppies are loose. Time for sport mode. Party's over, boys. Drive the Nissan Sentra. Now get a low 209 per month lease on Sentra. Gordon Ramsay looks for his next food star. Entrepreneurs are fighting for a $250,000 prize. But this time, he faces his biggest rival ever. Who wants to be on Team Vanderpump? It's Team Lisa versus Team Gordon. She can Vanderpump off. <laughs> food Stars premieres Wednesday, May 22nd on Fox. Another court hearing delayed for the man accused of stealing two police cruisers and leading police on a chase before being shot by law enforcement. An extended family member told us today that they're glad police didn't seriously hurt or kill Gary Porter and hope he can get on a better path because of this. Mal Meyer has more from the Oxford County Courthouse. State police say Gary Porter was arrested last week when the Paris police chief tried to get him out of a police vehicle. Porter slipped his handcuffs to the front, got into the driver's seat and stole the cruiser. Authorities from multiple agencies chased him down before Porter crashed on Route 117 in Paris. Then officers opened fire as Porter stole an Oxford County Sheriff's Department vehicle and drove off before crashing and being caught by police. He was shot one time, all while wearing a hospital gown. I'm not sure Mr. Porter does understand what's happening now. Today was the court's third attempt to hold Porter's first court appearance, delayed twice last week because he appeared catatonic and confused. He's not in a, a mental state to, to have an initial appearance. Today, his lawyer said he was well enough to proceed, though he was granted a mental health evaluation. But at no time did we actually see Porter because there was a problem connecting with the jail via Zoom. York County Jail does not have any staff available to connect to the Zoom to provide Mr. Porter to us. York County Sheriff William King says staff told him that the audio wasn't working for about 10 minutes and Porter wasn't listed to be arraigned. 
In the meantime, at least seven officers are still on paid administrative leave for the shooting. The town of Paris's internal investigation into the police chief's actions continues. He too is on leave. A sergeant with that department is set to come back on Monday. Another hearing is set for Monday afternoon. And that was Mel Meyer reporting. Well, stroke survivors are speaking out about how important it is to be aware of the symptoms and to act quickly in the case of an emergency. Johnny Maffey has, talks about the signs to look out for during American Stroke Awareness Month. Every 40 seconds in the U.S. someone has a stroke, according to the American Heart Association. Now, strokes are treatable, but it's about acting fast and getting the right treatment. Take a look at your screen here because we're about to hear from someone whose life was saved from this. The acronym is FAST. If your face is drooping, if your arms are weak, if you're slurring your words or having speech difficulty, it's time to call 911. It was a normal day. There was nothing unusual about it. I had no symptoms. I got up to make myself a cup of coffee before I went out for a run and collapsed in my kitchen. Sarah Beliveau is a stroke survivor from Maine. She was healthy back in June 2017 when her husband recognized she had some of these symptoms and jumped into action. The fact that he recognized it immediately, I attribute to the fact that he had seen, so this was in June, so May being stroke month, um, he had seen a lot of ads and heard a lot of ads on the radio from the American Heart Association talking about the risk factors and the symptoms and the um, signs of a stroke. And so from that moment on, um, I became involved with the organization. Beliveau says an important part of her story is that doctors did not know the cause of her stroke right away. Because I didn't have any risk factors um, and I was a, you know, a healthy woman um, in my middle age and they they, when I left the hospital, they, they didn't know what had happened. So I left the hospital not knowing what had caused my stroke, which is very, you know, as you can imagine, unsettling. So I went, underwent a, um, quite a bit of testing to, to see if they could identify what it was. I did have a heart defect. Now, doctors told Beliveau that they could not correct that heart defect until after her next stroke. Well, she didn't like that answer, kept advocating herself and eventually did get it corrected about a year later. And that was Johnny Maffey reporting. It was, and coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, Israeli officials announced they will be sending more troops into Rafa. Officials also saying 100 hostages are still believed to be in captivity by Hamas. And while the number of COVID cases has been dwindling, health officials are urging people to take precautions as two new COVID variants emerge. Those stories and more when we come back. the Hyundai Tucson with advanced tech and safety features. There's joy in every journey. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 3.99% APR or up to 2000 bonus cash. See your local Bangor Hyundai dealer. When Electrify Maine wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Electrify Maine provides outstanding electrical services to eastern and central Maine. They are a licensed Generac dealer specializing in generator and heat pump installs. Call today for a free estimate. Refine, your local expert in window and door installation, carpentry repairs, and commercial facilities management. At Refine, we're proud to offer Maine-made paradigm windows crafted with care and precision to ensure quality and durability like no other. From quaint cottages to bustling businesses, let us refine your space with our signature Maine-made touch. Trust Refine to exceed your expectations every time. Contact us today and let Maine Maine Craftsmanship elevate your home or business. Rise with Refine. Our biggest challenge, uncertainty. Hidden fees, surcharges, who knows what to expect. Turn shipping to your advantage. Keep it simple with clear upfront pricing. With USPS Ground Advantage. Jumpstart the 2024 ATV season at the Maine ATV UTV Expo, May 17th through the 19th at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor. No other event features a gathering of so many trail riding enthusiasts, product manufacturers, dealers, and industry service providers. While there, check out Huff Power Sports, stop by our booth, and see what is new for Can-Am ATVs, UTVs, and Spiders. And Shinpon Village, Northern Maine's premier outdoor recreational resort, with hundreds of miles of ATV trails right from your doorstep.
The Hyundai Tucson with advanced tech and safety features. There's joy in every journey. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 3.99% APR or up to 2000 bonus cash. See your local Bangor Hyundai dealer. If you've been injured, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Welcome back. Trucks carrying humanitarian aid for the Gaza Strip crossed over a U.S.-built pier on Friday. It comes as Israeli forces locate more hostages. Fox's Alex Hogan has more. Israeli forces recovering the bodies of three hostages in the Gaza Strip overnight. The IDF says that they were killed while trying to escape a music festival during Hamas's October 7th attack. More than 100 hostages are believed to still be in Hamas captivity. We will leave no stone unturned. We will do everything in our power to find our hostages and bring them home. It comes as fighting rages in the northern and southern parts of the Strip. Israeli officials announcing plans to send more forces to the city of Rafa. Hamas is not an organization that can reorganize at the moment. It does not have reserved troops. We are cutting it off. We are wearing it down. Meanwhile, trucks carrying desperately needed food, medicine and other supplies began crossing over a U.S. built pier into Gaza on Friday. The pier will complement what's what's going into Gaza. There'll be a security issue there. The Israelis are going to have to have to protect it for sure. With heavy fighting impacting land deliveries, military officials say the pier will allow for aid to be funneled into the strip from various countries. The goal is to have as many as 150 trucks enter the territory each day. But as some land routes remain closed, aid agencies fear the new shipments will not be enough to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. Getting aid to people they need into and across Gaza cannot and should not depend on a floating dock. According to the U.N., about 500 aid trucks crossed into Gaza daily before the start of the war. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. Well, there is controversy over an image obtained by the New York Times from the home of a U.S. Supreme Court justice. It could cause significant problems for Samuel Alito and the entire panel. Fox's Shannon Bream explains. A three-year-old picture of an upside-down flag outside the home of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito is generating calls from the left for him to recuse himself from some high-profile cases as the country awaits a slew of opinions in a series of contentious Supreme Court debates. You know, the court suffers historically low trust right now among the American people, and this is doing nothing to help that. The New York Times obtained the picture dated January 17, 2021, and quoted a law professor who equated the flag to putting up a stop the steal sign in the justice's yard. Justice Alito told me today that it was yard signs that actually sparked the dispute that led to his wife, Martha Ann, briefly flying the flag upside down, something in which he says he had no involvement. Alito says his wife had spoken to a neighbor about a sign saying bleep Trump in view of where school children waited for their bus. It did not go well. Alito says the neighbor then put up a sign directly naming Mrs. Alito and blaming her for the events of January 6th. According to the justice, while the Alitos were on a walk, a man at the home with the signs got into a heated discussion with Mrs. Alito, quote, including the C word. She was distraught and hung the flag as it appears in that published photo. The justice offered no explanation for that gesture. Most of the country got its first glimpse of Martha Ann Alito during her husband's heated confirmation hearings, at one point in tears. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Dick Durbin was a part of those hearings and said today that the flag photo, quote, clearly creates the appearance of bias. Justice Alito should recuse himself immediately from cases related to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection, including the question of the former president's immunity in U.S. v. Donald Trump. There is no indication Justice Alito intends to step away from any case currently under consideration. We will get the next batch of opinions from the Supreme Court next Thursday. In Washington, Shannon Bream, Fox News. 
Meanwhile, a House committee hearing on Capitol Hill Thursday night quickly descended into chaos. It came complete with name calling, insults and accusations of members being under the influence. Fox's Rebecca Castor is in Washington where lawmakers are reacting to the raucous scene. Please come to order. But order didn't last long. While the subject of Thursday evening's House Oversight Committee meeting was a contempt of Congress charge against Attorney General Merrick Garland, fireworks between lawmakers stole the show. You know what you're here for. Well, you don't want to talk about I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. That's Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene and Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett trading jabs. Then New York's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez jumped in to defend her Democratic colleague. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical appearance of another band. person? Are your Move feelings hurt? her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, really? Don't even play, baby girl. Gonna... Several Democrats petitioned Chairman James Comer to bar Green from speaking the rest of the session. But when Comer did not, Crockett fired back. Just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built, butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? Oh, it was a radical breach of decorum. Today, lawmakers still in disbelief. Some even saying alcohol may have been involved. The gentlelady from New Mexico, uh, Melanie Stansbury, raised it. She said there, there are members drinking in the room, and that's something that is worth investigating. And both sides are pointing the finger over who's to blame. Just to be very clear about who was actually calling names and doing all this hor horrible name calling, it was uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. There was a lot of disrespect early on against Miss Greene, and that was kind of brushed over. Despite the drama, the GOP-led committee ultimately voted to send a resolution holding Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress to the House floor for a vote. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. While COVID-19 levels are considered relatively low, a new crop of virus variants is putting health officials on high alert heading into summer. Fox's Madeline Rivera has the latest from Washington. Health experts are closely watching the emergence of two new COVID variants, warning of the potential of a summer surge. These variants are part of a new family of variants that are called BLIRT. And yes, you did hear that right. Scientists have nicknamed this new group of variants FLIRT based on the technical names for their mutations. According to the CDC, the so-called FLIRT variants, labeled KP1 and KP2, account for nearly a third of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. FLIRT variants are definitely something to watch. Uh, scientists are warning that they may be better at evading the immune system due to mutations in the spike protein. And of course, the waning immunity and poor uptake of the latest COVID vaccine have also made us more susceptible. The flirt variants were first detected in wastewater surveillance. In Las Vegas, wastewater surveillance started in 2020. Initially looking for the pathogen that causes COVID-19 has since extended to examining flood control channels in hopes of identifying health issues like COVID variants and protecting hundreds of unhoused residents living in tunnels. And when we see these spikes, we can then deploy resources that are usually limited to provide a choice for the community there to decide whether they would want to be tested, whether they would want to be vaccinated. Still, the CDC estimates fewer than one in four adults have received an updated COVID-19 vaccine in the past nine months. There is definitely an element in America of vaccine fatigue. They just feel like uh, they've had a lot of vaccines and they're, they're sort of getting tired of the process. Experts recommend anyone who hasn't gotten last fall's vaccine consider getting it now. In Washington, Madler Rivera, Fox News. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Scotty Scheffler, the number one ranked golfer in the world, is finding himself in some legal trouble with Louisville Metro Police. And in sports, Maine baseball keeps their playoff hopes alive with a win over Albany. We'll have those highlights and more. Stay with us. Fox Monday, it's the grand finale. Congratulations goes to... Bring it home. MasterChef Junior finale event, Monday on Fox. Whether it's time to buy or sell your home, Patty Thompson is a name that you can depend on. With over 25 years of experience, your family will be in good hands with Patty Thompson. What do heavy rain, extreme heat, and flying lumber all have in common? 
They're just a few of the things we use to test our replacement windows. At Renewal by Anderson, we put our windows through the worst because your home deserves the best. Renewal by Anderson acclaimed custom replacement windows. Call or visit us online today to get some incredible savings. Affordable financing, too. An official message from Medicare. A new law is helping us save more money on prescription drugs. Maybe you can save, too. With Medicare's Extra Health Program, our drug premiums are zero, and our out-of-pocket costs are low. I enrolled, and I'm saving money. If you're single and make less than $23,000 a year, or are a married couple making less than $31,000, you may qualify and save, even if you don't think you qualify. It pays to find out. Go to ssa.gov slash extra help. For years, I've been inviting you to do business with Downey's Toyota. Now let's hear from a customer. I chose Downey's for their reputation and service after the sale. I was unsure about what I wanted, and Sam answered all of my questions. I decided on the RAV4 for reliability and great gas mileage. Sam kept me informed as my vehicle was in transit, and I'll certainly look to him for my next purchase. It was a wonderful experience from start to finish. Thank you. We hope you'll soon discover that all roads lead to Down East on Wilson Street in Brewer. Thousands of kids like Grayson and Elliot receive care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center each year. You can help them by supporting the Summer Classic for Maine Kids. This golf tournament will help kids receive care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center by raising funds to ensure that health care is available today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. Every dollar raised helps kids get back to the business of being kids. For more information about the tournament and how to register, please visit northernlight.org slash for kids. Whether it's time to buy or sell your home, Patty Thompson is a name that you can depend on. With over 25 years of experience, your family will be in good hands with Patty Thompson. Welcome back. Actor Alec Baldwin is asking a New Mexico judge to decide of involuntary manslaughter. Baldwin, the lead actor and co-producer of the movie Rust, was indicted for the October 2021 death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Hutchins died when a gun in Baldwin's hands went off during a scene rehearsal, killing Hutchins and injuring director Joel Souza. Baldwin's plea is that prosecutors violated grand jury proceedings to hide exculpatory evidence and witnesses. Prosecutors refute the proceedings argument and say Baldwin's evading responsibility for workplace safety violations. Well, as the data trickles in, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say the number of drug fatal the number of fatal drug overdoses is dropping. With researchers trying to learn more about what's contributing to that decline, communities across the country also taking action as they work to combat the drug drug epidemics on their streets. Fox's Kevin Cork reports. Drug overdoses have killed more than one million people in the U.S. since 1999, according to the CDC. But new provisional data from the agency reveals the nation experienced a decline in those deaths last year. The report indicates more than 107,000 people died in 2023 down from the roughly 111,000 deaths the year before. Officials say deaths involving synthetic opioids like fentanyl fell, citing the possibility that overdose reversal treatments like Narcan are expanding. People often are taking fentanyl without realizing that they're actually taking fentanyl. And Narcan is amazing. Narcan saves lives. In communities hit hard by the drug epidemic, like Portland, Oregon, people are arming themselves with Narcan to help strangers on the street. Drug use also continues impacting community members in San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood. This is really an intervention of saying, you know, we need this space. With the sidewalks crowded, residents in the Safe Passage program are intervening. In the mornings, volunteers guide kids to school, taking them on the calmer routes and shielding them from sights, especially troubling to young eyes. While the latest CDC data is provisional and could change slightly, officials still expect to see a decline in drug overdose deaths once all the numbers from last year are finally reviewed. I'm Kevin Cork, Fox News. 
The world's number one golfer, Scotty Scheffler, is back in action after getting arrested on his way to the PGA Championship in Kentucky. Fox's Connor Hansen has that story. Guys, guys, guys. A reporter catches on video the moment police handcuff Scotty Scheffler, the number one ranked golfer in the world. Traffic had been brought to a standstill outside Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, the site of the PGA Championship, after a deadly accident. Just a couple of hours before his tea time, Scheffler reportedly drove past an officer who told him to stop. Police say the officer grabbed onto the car until it stopped about 10 yards later and was hurt in the process. He's going to jail and it ain't nothing you can do about it. Scheffler was charged with second degree assault of a police officer, among other crimes. But he quickly went from his orange jumpsuit back to his golf gear for the tournament's second round. I was in shock, and so I was, I was shaking, and it took me a little while, you know, in the car on the way over here to kind of calm down. Can't comment on any specifics, but my situation will be handled. It was just a, uh, just a big misunderstanding. My heart goes out to the family. The golfer's lawyer noted that he was in a marked PGA vehicle and says Scheffler never assaulted an officer and will plead not guilty. Scotty Scheffler was, you know, caught up in this, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, was trying to follow directions of the police officers. He heard one thing, they told him another. The next thing you know, there's a police officer on top of his vehicle. This is a humble, gracious, courteous guy. This is a guy who would never, you would never feel would be in this type of a position or would put himself in any kind of uh, situation uh, that would warrant anything like this. Scotty Scheffler is scheduled to be arraigned after the tournament next Tuesday. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, summer is fast approaching, and something that's already here, ticks. Lots of them. Health officials warn this year's tick population could be larger than last year thanks to another mild winter. And they want you to take some steps to protect yourself, especially against the common black-legged tick, which can spread Lyme disease. When people spend time outside during tick season, um, one of the things that there are several measures that they need to take into consideration, which is uh, wear long uh, sleeve, uh, long pants, stay on the on the trail, because ticks tend to um, be uh, on brushes and wooden areas. However, if you spend, if you uh, stay on the trail, there are ticks like long star tick that it can come it towards you. So also it's something that you need to uh, take into consideration. That's why a tick repellent, uh, it's necessary uh, and highly recommended to wear on all clothes. And we've certainly been seeing them as we're out and about every day with our pets. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad this year. Absolutely. You know, I, I live in an area where I don't know if it's just a little bit worse uh, mm -hmm. just outside of Bangor, but it is, yeah. it's tough. Every time I, almost every time I take my dog out, there's yeah. either a tick on, on me or him. And right. uh, so I'm always making sure to, to, to check uh, the both of us each time we go out. And, yeah. um, you know, there are other th steps you can take, uh, as were just mentioned, too. Yeah, vigilance probably a key step. Right. All righty. Well, speaking of the great outdoors, folks, our full five day is coming up. Stay with us. Upper 70s across much of the area today. Tomorrow is going to be a bit different with some rain showers in the area and somewhat cooler temperatures. More on that when I come back. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Summer's here, and with a new Toyota, you can start your summer with a splash. Nailed it. You could get 1.99% financing on most Tundra hybrid and gas models. Toyota, let's go places. Breathing Claritin Clear is like... Feeling the breeze instead of feeling congested. Fast relief of allergies with nasal congestion so you can breathe better. Claritin Plus Decongestant. Live Claritin Clear. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream is open for business. 
Located five miles off exit 244 in Medway, you will find affordable prices on all of your favorites. We offer homemade pizza, mouth-watering cheeseburgers, lobster rolls, scallops, and the local favorite is our sweet sausage sub. We also have kid-friendly meals and offer fresh doughboys and ice cream year-round. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream. Stop by for a delicious bite to eat and dessert too. Protect your vehicle from rusting away with Bell's Automotive Protection. We are the leader in mobile undercoating and rust proofing in Maine. We'll travel right to your driveway using the best and safest products on the market. This is much safer than rubberized coatings that can cause damage later on. We spray all types of vehicles including commercial fleets. We all know vehicles aren't cheap anymore. Don't let the harsh winter chemicals eat them away. Call us or visit our page for a free quote. 207-659-3805. A finale so good, it'll leave you speechless. <laughs> the winner is the So You Think You Can Dance season finale, Monday on Fox. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people. Let's talk about the weather. We made it to the weekend. Uh, a gorgeous day today. Temperatures in the 70s, even a couple low 80s in a few spots. Tomorrow, though, a bit cooler as we have more cloud cover and a few more showers in the area for tomorrow. But look what we did today. 78 here in Bangor, Service and Millinocket. It was a nice day temperature-wise, but there were a couple of thunder showers out there again. And look at the heat building across the Midwest and Great Lakes right now. Now, this is going to try to slide our direction, so we do have an 80 degree or near 80 degree temperature in the forecast next week. Until then, though, a bit cooler tomorrow and also on Sunday. The wind today, not a factor out of the south, around 5 miles per hour right now. It'll actually go calm for several hours tonight and come back tomorrow on 10 miles per hour or so throughout the afternoon. So overall, not a very windy stretch of weather for us, likely until probably Monday or Tuesday of next week. Until then, though, a small crash advisory is out there for some locations for a Wave heights out here approaching 8 to 10 feet into Monday afternoon. All right, so out there today, just like yesterday, right? So lots of clear skies this morning, followed by increasing clouds. Then the sea breeze kicked in, uh, gave us some instability, a couple of showers out of that. Those are now getting out of here, but there is more behind that system over here to the west of us. Uh, kind of messy here, right? That is sliding in our direction. So it's not going to be an all day rain tomorrow. We'll just know uh, scattered showers will be out there tomorrow, and you'll likely be chased indoors for an hour or two as it rain kind of moves through the region tomorrow afternoon. And then behind that, we'll get a break in the action most likely for Sunday into Monday, probably even Tuesday before more thunder showers get in here from this system here, probably midweek next week. All right, walk you through it. So tonight, no issues at all. Tomorrow, again, here is late day tomorrow, 8 o'clock or so. A couple of sprinkles or showers in the area, so cloudy. The clouds get out of here tomorrow evening. A pretty nice day for us on Sunday into Sunday evening before we get increasing clouds again later on Monday and brings a couple of sprinkles across the area, probably late Monday, more so Tuesday into Wednesday. Again, not an all-day rain. Don't cancel your plans Tuesday or Wednesday. Just know there will be more showers in the forecast midweek next week. All right, it's not going to be a lot of rain, though. We're talking maybe a tenth of an inch of rainfall. Uh, we certainly had more than that, right? So not a big rainfall at all coming our way anytime soon. The allergens are out there, though, so the tree pollen is off the charts right now in the high to very high category. We are also watching the grass pollen as well. Our forecast then for tonight, though is lots of clouds out there some dense fog is possible a rogue shower can't be ruled out look for low temperatures down near 51 for tomorrow a lot more cloud cover than today we'll call it mostly cloudy a couple sprinkles in there as well uh, high temperatures near 71 with an east breeze around 5 to 10 and then looking ahead here five day forecast shows a bit cool tomorrow 71 same story for sunday but more sunshine sunday and then look what happens monday lots of sunshine 76 that is sunny 80 on tuesday afternoon Already, those summer temps are here. They surely are, and All we are right. happy about it. We are. All right, well, sports is coming right up next. Stay with us. Let love bloom in a brand new 2024 Subaru Forester. Buy with 1.9% financing or lease for just $319 per month. It's your Forester. Find it at Quirk Subaru. It was one thing when my mom got Alzheimer's, but then we started noticing things that seemed off. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes she'd fidget with her fingers, get suddenly overwhelmed, and even throw things. And that was just never her. So we asked her doctor what else we could do. 
Rick Zolti is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Rexalti helped reduce my mom's symptoms. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexalti. Fires, floods, burst pipes. Disasters happen, but the mess they leave behind doesn't have to last. For 40 years, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration has been there to help Mainers get back to the closest to normal as they can. When your property is at its worst, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is at their best, and they have been for four decades. Put your trust in the Bouchard team. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Plan your next road trip in a new Hyundai from Quirk in Bangor. Experience unmatched safety and style. Lease 24 Tucson XRT for only $369 per month while enjoying three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. It's your Hyundai. Find it at Quirk. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Triumph Professional Cleaning Services, providing outstanding commercial cleaning services to eastern and central Maine. Triumph Professional Cleaning, creating an environment of cleanliness. Can the Bruins force a Game 7? Welcome back in, everyone. Thanks for staying with us. The question all Bruins fans were asking today is that. Will the Bees live to fight another day? Brad Marchand back as the Bees try and take down the Panthers in a pivotal Game 6 at TD Garden. This one has classic written all over it. We are going to pick it up. In the first period, just under a minute was when the Bruins got underway when these highlights start to roll. Bruins, uh, here we go. Marchand back after a couple of absences. We're going to pick it up under a minute in the first. No score. Jake DeBrusque finds Pavel Zaka on the breakaway, and he buries the backhand, his first goal of the playoffs. Bruins lead 1-0. Second period, same score from behind the net. Zaka centers it to Justin Brazo, but his shot saved by Sergei Bobrovsky. Almost give the Bees a 2-0 lead. Almost doesn't cut it. Second period, same score. Carter Verhage's shot is blocked. The loose puck is poked towards Anton Lundell, and he scores the wrister. His second goal of the playoffs, game tied at one. Under two minutes in the third, same score. Anton Lundell's shot is staved, but Gustav Forsling gets the rebound, scores his second goal of the playoffs. Bruins fall 2-1. to one. That goal ends the season. I thanked them, and it was an honor to coach them because of the hard work and the competitiveness that they brought throughout the year. That was uh, the biggest thing I wanted to get across, and that, you know, um, you're never happy when you're, you don't win your last game of the year. Now we will move on to the softball field. Husson softball in an elimination scenario in day two of the NCAA tournament, needing two wins to advance to tomorrow. Let's go to O'Keefe Field for game one. The top-seeded Eagles facing two-seed RPI winner plays later tonight. Bottom of the first, Husson's Bula McKay with a fly ball to left. Katie Raymond tagging from third. She is going to beat the throw and score on the sack fly. one nothing Eagles. Let's go all the way to the seventh. Same score until RPI's Alex Ledger Skies one to the wall and deep left. Megan Wampner scores to tie it at one. So we go to extras. Bottom eight, McCabe up with Kenzie Dore on second. Cat Worthington can't handle the grounder. Dore would score. That is a walk off for McCabe. Eagles win it two to one. I just did what I needed to do. I knew I wanted to extend it at least one more at bat and I got it done. Everything we do today is for our seniors. You know, we never know when our last inning, our last game is going to be. So we leave it all out there. Game two over at UMaine's Keswick Field because of rain. Eagles facing four seed Framingham State again. Top of the first already 1-0 Husson. Tori Exel nails one to deep right center and to the wall. Bulla McCabe scores. It is now 2 to nothing. Skipping ahead to the bottom of the sixth. Bases loaded one out for the Rams. Anna Lang sits down. Eliza Kar Karignan and then Talia Duca puts one on the ground. Ali Morin out at third to escape the jam. Top seven. Husson's Jess Pomerlo trying to steal, steal, but Duca sees it. She shoots her down as Michaela Rooney applies the tag. 
Bottom seven, Lang trying to close it out. She sits down two straight Rams, and then Gwen Carpenter pops it up. McCabe would grab it in fall territory. Husson wins two to nothing. They face Williams in the championship game. Just having our first win, I think that boosted our confidence up a little bit. And today we just brought everything we could, and then that's what got us to tomorrow. We're ready. I think it's going to be tough, but I don't think it's anything we can't do. So. Moving on now, a must-win game for Maine baseball. They need a win today and tomorrow to keep their playoff hopes alive. Game two of the series against the Albany Great Danes. A win for Albany clinches, clinches their playoff spot. Loss for Maine eliminates them. Tied 1-1. Nick White up after a Connor Goodman double. White rips one into center. Jeremiah Jenkins scores. Look at Goodman hustling around for the second run. 3-1 Maine. Next inning, runners on for Ryan Faremi, and he strokes one into the outfield. That scores a run, but Luke Lavager, he would strand the bases loaded on the mound. Next inning, runner on third after a leadoff double. No harm for Lavager. He gets the backwards K to end the frame and is fired up. 5-3 to three now. Dean O'Neill at the dish sends this baseball deep to left, and that is into the bleachers at Alphonse Stadium. A two-run shot. Main leads 7-3. 7-5 to five now, one out in the ninth, tying run at first base. Michael Maggio lifts this one to shallow left center. That's trouble, but look at Nick White with a sliding catch to save the run. Maine hangs on to win. 7-5 to five is the final. Here's Nick Durba on the performance from his pitchers today. Laz's been there for us all year long, and, you know, G's been hurt. And, you know, G's been a guy we've been relying on, so I'm not really surprised that he came in and, and was able to do what he did, especially considering he's not even at full health yet, so... Uh, you know, big step up from those guys for sure. All right, let's go to Boston now. A big night at the Garden. Bruins lost in game six. And with a Timberwolves win last night, we now know when fans will go back to the Garden for the Celtics' next game in the Eastern Conference Finals. Seas still await the winner of that Knicks Pacers series, but we have a schedule. The Eastern Conference Finals starts on Tuesday at the Garden. Those first two games will be Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. on ESPN. And then game three will be Saturday on the road at 8.30 on ABC. Besides game three, every game is on ESPN at that 8 p.m. time slot. The teams will have one day off in between each game. And that is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Ugh, when is my allergy spray going to kick in? You need Astapro. Astapro? It's faster, bro. Eight times faster than Flonase. It's faster, bro. It's faster, bro. It's faster, bro. It's mom to you. Astapro starts working in 30 minutes. Astapro and go. Breathing Claritin Clear is like feeling the breeze instead of feeling congested. Fast relief of allergies with nasal congestion so you can breathe better. Claritin Plus Decongestant. Live Claritin Clear. So, all of us are here to talk about trading. Right now at US Cellular, you can get a new phone without having to trade in your old one. Trade you my PB&J for that phone. No, kid, you don't have to trade. See? $830 off any phone at US Cellular. No trade-in needed. You drive a hard bargain. Boom. Chocolate milk. You don't have to trade. I'll take the chocolate milk. Okay. Get $830 off any phone. No trade-in needed with any unlimited data plan. When we say it'll be on time, they expect it to be on time. Turn shipping to your advantage. Keep those expectations with reliable ground shipping. Thanks, Brandon with USPS Ground Advantage. The furniture revolution continues at Dorsey's, and today it's all about sectional sofas. Big sectionals, little sectionals, reclining sectionals, sectionals with hide beds chaise lounges, even cuddlers. Heck, we even have sectionals with dog beds. When qualified buyers combine our great sectionals with 24 months, 0% financing, they're easy to own too. The sectional revolution is in full bloom at Dorsey's, so what are you waiting for? Be comfortable, my friends. Hank's Husqvarna is your trusted full-line Husqvarna dealer, offering you everything you need for your outdoor projects. From high-performance lawn tractors and zero-turn mowers to chainsaws, trimmers, battery-powered and powerful snowblowers, we have just what you need. Every piece of equipment is fully set up, serviced, and ready for use by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or new equipment sales, make your way to Hank's Husqvarna in Carmel or Newport. 
Major League Baseball, all season long on Fox. If I work with the feds, then lock her up. You're gonna keep running for the rest of your life? If you can't do your job, I'm gonna do it. The Cleaning Lady, two hour season finale, Tuesday on Fox. Welcome back. It was nearly 30 years ago when the Atlantic Challenge International Contest of Seamanship first set sail, with only the United States and France competing to see who had the best skills. Well, since then, the biannual event has grown to 80 boats and 16 different nations, and come this July, well, that competition will be hosted in Belfast for the first time. From July 21st through the 28th, the friendly competition puts young adults sailing, rowing, navigation, and knot tying skills to the test. And while the competition will be held in Belfast for the first time, Maine, of course, no stranger to that challenge. Rockland and Rockport have been a cornerstone of the event since its inception, with the event's first ever boats built, being built at the Rockport Apprentice Shop. The event's co-founder, a Rockland native by the name of Lance Lee. And to learn more, you can visit our our website. Finally tonight, as the saying goes, good things come in threes. And that's certainly the case for one Orland farmer after one of his cows gave birth to very rare calf triplets. Our Callie Warren sat down with them. Oh, it's just uh, it's like buying a lottery ticket and winning. <laughs> farmer Richard Lord had about 16 cows a few weeks ago. But that number jumped to 19 when one of his cows gave birth to three babies in one day. He says the chances of it happening is about one in a hundred thousand. No, this is uh, pretty exciting. You know, it's a life, two lifetimes probably. People, I know one person that said that he knew of a set, but other than that, I, I feel good to have one calf, and here I've got three. So after one of his cows gave birth to twins last year. <laughs> Lord says there's no secret trick to the rare multiple births. Normal routine on a farm having babies, but have three at a time is quite unusual. And I had nothing to do with it. I just come out and found them. <laughs> the triplets are all male beef calves named Teeny, Tiny, and Mo. Teeny is black one, Tiny is brown one, and Mo is a smoke colored or silver colored one. Teeny, Tiny, and Mo. Lord says both the mama cow and all three babies are happy and healthy. He says they've been accepted by the rest of the herd and will soon be joined by more babies as some of his cows prepare to calf out. In Orland, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Wow, that is so cute. just a great way to wrap <laughs> this one up. Uh. I mean... What a day. Uh, I'm a little jealous of Callie getting to do that story. I'm a little jealous, too. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Triple the cuteness. Right? Oh. And I love their names. Teeny, Tiny, and Mo. Doesn't get any better than it, that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> they're just, they're fuzzy and adorable, and that's how we roll here. That is. All righty, folks, that's going to do it for us. Good night. Good night, everyone.